In this lesson, we'll explain page sharing and permission inheritance in pages and team spaces by creating a new benefits page in our general team space. The more content you've built in Notion, the more you'll consider who has access to what content and what kind of access they have. Permission models can get fairly complex, so today we'll look at some guiding rules for understanding access in Notion. We'll mostly look at pages because there are some nuances when it comes to synced blocks and databases. We can explore those at another time. When we talk about permissions, we often talk in terms of a hierarchy of access. The highest level of access a user can have is full access, which means that they can change other people's access levels and do anything with the content on the page, including share it to the web. The lowest level, of course, is no access. If you're watching this video, you're likely already familiar with the other options. Can view, can comment, can edit, and can edit content on databases. Another thing we talk about is the idea of parent and child pages. If you think of Notion like a series of nested folders, parents are the folder pages that the child pages are within, and they can be nested infinitely. With those definitions out of the way, there's two rules that unequivocally govern permissions in Notion. Permissions are granted and revoked on the page level, but inherited from parent pages and team spaces a page's share menu can be seen as the single source of truth. The highest level of access applied to any individual user wins. In other words, if a user has full access via a group, but only can view access via team space defaults, they'll be given full access. Let's break those down, starting with the first rule, permission inheritance from parent pages and team spaces. We'll start at the team space level. As we just learned, TeamSpace owners can set up default permissions for TeamSpace owners, TeamSpace members, and Workspace members who don't belong to the TeamSpace. If you're on an enterprise plan, groups and individuals within a TeamSpace can also be given unique levels of access. A top-level page of a TeamSpace will default to the TeamSpace's settings, but these settings can be changed. Child pages will inherit permissions from their parents. Knowing how these default permissions are set, what happens in the case of a conflict? We've actually already seen examples where it comes to the highest level of access winning. This person is a member of the Sales and Success Managers group, which is granted a higher level of permissions than other TeamSpace members. Even though they're a TeamSpace member with can edit access, they'll actually have full access due to their manager group standing. Similarly, let's consider a situation where an individual's access is manually revoked via the share menu. In this case, even though a member went through the effort to remove this TeamSpace owner from being able to access the page, they didn't change the TeamSpace owner setting. So this change wouldn't actually apply. In order to ensure that access was revoked for this individual, they'd have to change access for TeamSpace owners as well. Before we dive into an example, I want to leave you with a word of caution. In Notion, it is possible to remove your own access to a page. We recommend individually granting yourself full access before reconfiguring page permissions in order to avoid this situation. These default permissions apply every time I create a new page. For example, I'll create a benefits page in the general team space. I'll expect that all team space owners will have full access and all team space members will have edit access. Since this is a default team space, workspace and team space members are the same. This is great, but let's say I just created this page and I'm still working on it maybe I'd want to revoke access while I'm working on it. To do so, I'd want to change the default level of access to no access, and then specifically invite the collaborators I want to share with. Now I can share with my manager directly and even a whole group of my peers. A side note on permissions, any user groups should map to your company's concept of teams and levels with additional groups being created for specific projects when needed. If you're on an enterprise plan, 
we recommend provisioning users into these groups through Skim. Note that members of the team space without access will simply see no access instead of the name of this page. Another way to do this would be to create the page in the private section of your sidebar. Then use the Move To menu to move it to the team space. Since you change the parent of the page by using the Move To menu, the inherited permissions will change as well. As you work on the guide and create subpages, these subpages will inherit permissions from the parent. Unless you overwrite permissions on a subpage, all of the pages and their permissions will stay linked together whenever you make a change. Once the guide is done, you can go back into the page sharing settings and grant access back to TeamSpace members. Moving even further, you can add or restrict permissions with groups. Let's give all managers edit access. Then we'll give all ICs view access. And finally, give the HR team full access. This guide is of particular interest for new hires and candidates, so you may want to add guests who aren't yet part of the company to this page. You can do that by adding a personal email without granting access to the full team space and all of the content in it. Just add the personal email via the share menu and do it on the parent benefit page so they will inherit access to all of the subpages as well. That's it on inherited permissions. For many, this happens behind the scenes. But in cases where you need to be very intentional, keeping these rules in mind will help make your life easier.